All right, my friends, let me know if you can hear me in the chat. <clears throat> William, how you doing? Jeff, Kelly, 940 Construction. Steven, what happened to your channel name? I don't I have no idea what you mean by that. Um, I don't know if you notice something different. Uh, Steven, just send that to help with the contractor fight because I don't know what that means. Let me log my food because I got to put some chow in me here. Just got back from the gym and come on, I'm trying to log it, I'm trying to log it. It's not cooperating. That's all right. Our official start time has not started here yet. Okay. There it is. Okay. Do one of them. I can do one of them. Boom. All right. Food is logged. Now I can focus. Karina's here. Chase. Um, Nick. Jason. Jeff. Merrick. I said hi to everybody else already who's on there. Tom, love your stuff. Need some more, bro. Bro. Uh, what kind of stuff do you want? What's helpful? You can always comment on things. Um, yeah, I think the channel name always said Tom Reaver on YouTube? I'm not sure. How to close. Oh, you're in the right place. And whoever's asking that question, uh, go to the link at the bottom of the little ticker there and you'll learn how to close. <laughs> uh, guys, we're going to talk a little bit about sales tonight. No, this is not a brownie. It's a builder's protein bar. Because I do like uh, 214 or so grams of protein a day. So, got to bang them out. All right. Welcome, my friends. We are at the top of the hour. <laughs> Kelly likes the mint chocolate. I like the peanut butter chocolate. Um, wood flooring team new to the food learning how to have the five step conversation enrolled in boot camp. Awesome. Cool. You guys, I'll be talking about this more as we go on. Um, but we just released our Shin Fu sales training videos, um, to get you guys started for about eight years. We have been uh teaching we've taught teaching taught hundreds and hundreds of contractors from every industry uh literally all around the world how to sell better how to sell differently which is more important than better different is more important than better and um we decided uh, to create a video course for this as well. We teach this inside Battleground at a deeper level than it is in the battle, that's in the uh, video course, but the video course is a great place to start. If you're not ready or you don't have the guts to jump in a Battleground and role play every day uh, with people that actually know what they're doing. So super excited about this. Uh, props to the contractor fight team, Roz, who's on here, and Lindsay and Neil and the gang behind the scenes who've made this happen. Uh, appreciate you guys for doing that. So guys, girls, people, let me pull up my notes here. Um, sorry. I had them up on my computer, but I didn't have them on my phone where I can actually read them. There we go. All right. So um, I want to talk a little bit uh, in the, uh, about sales in general. And then I want to go ahead and um, 
answer any questions for you guys. Okay. So we'll do some Q and a as well while I eat my protein bar. So sorry, talking with my mouth full. My guess is you guys are okay with that. It's not going to be that much longer. A couple more bites. So guys, sales is everywhere in your life. It's not just a business thing. Obviously, it's a, there's sales and business to sell, to get, you know, work. But um, we have been selling our whole lives. You know, from the time you were a little kid, you've been closing the deal with your parents and grandparents and teachers. Uh, I remember once I had a uh, big exam. Uh, I had just gotten out of the Marine Corps, went back to college for a minute. And I was not ready for the exam. Walked in, pulled the instructor aside, and I said to her something to the effect of, um, hey, I love your class, which I did. And I was already getting an A in the class. It was an, actually an anthropology class, believe it or not. And um, I uh, I just said, I told her the truth. I just said, hey, I'm, I am just not remotely ready for this final. Um, would it be crazy for me to get another couple days to prep and I take it later this week? And she agreed and I took it and I aced it and got an A in the class, all that good stuff. So, um, so guys, if you are dealing with another human being in any way, shape or form, if you're married, business partner, your crew, customers, you know, somebody at a, at a store, whatever you are selling because sales is all about relationship. It's all about connection. Um, it's all about influence. So these words get thrown around. I want to be very clear here. Um, and, um, you know, as we promoted this live tonight, we talked about Tom's biggest sales tip. Other than doing our Shinfu training, I would say even before that, the biggest tip I could give you for selling is understand that this is not sales Success in sales is not about closing the deal. It's not about closing the deal. It is about truly understanding the other party, the other person involved, okay? And so um, when you become a communications expert, the money will flow. Okay, now I'm going to transfer all this to business, right? <clears throat> when you become a communications expert, the money will flow. And so um, that's the way we've been training people to sell uh, for many years. That's why uh, if you've seen some of our posts and the screenshots I do of a lot of our members inside of Battleground uh, that are using Shin Fu and seeing them go from 300 grand a year to 2.7 million in revenue in one year, 12 months time, um, at a 50% or better profit margin, gross profit margin. Um, the root of that is they're not trying to close the deal. Yeah, James says, I've heard good things about it. James is one of our coaches in the fight. Uh, he's also a GC who has been implementing this for many years. I did a post not too long ago about James about how the first time I met him, he had no life in his eyes. The guy was a walking, he's the walking dead, right? And um, and James embraced this stuff and it's totally turned things around and now he's helping uh, hundreds of other people get better. You guys, so my number one sales tip is, is it is not about closing the deal. It's about connecting with another human being and understanding where they're coming from, understanding what's important to them. OK, so back to like spouses and kids and stuff. If you are telling people you need to clean your room and all these other things with your kids or whatever, <clears throat> um, that's not the right way to go about selling. OK, everybody has a duty when you're trying to persuade somebody to your point of view or hiring your company or buying your product or your service, uh, your duty is to. Um, connect with them in a way that nobody else will connect. And, uh, and that's what happens inside of Shinfu when you do it properly. Okay. 
So at the bottom of the screen there, you'll see the little ticker going across. Go to that link. Uh, it released today. We're doing a special offer today uh, through the end of uh, February, and then the price is going to go up. Okay, so don't wait. Get in. Every day you wait is a day that you're not getting better. So I want to talk a few more points about sales here. Um, I often find that home improvement contractors don't don't have the right identity. They haven't embraced the right identity when it comes to sales, meaning most contractors continue to see themselves as a contractor and not a business person. OK, that's number one. And right along at the top there being you're going to be a business person. Well, if you're going to be a business person, probably a little higher than that is you need to be a salesperson because you do not have a business if you do not have sales. And so if you want to get better at sales, stop calling yourself a contractor. Call yourself a salesperson. Call yourself, you know, anything other than the, the dude or the dudette doing the trade. Of course, the trade and the craftsmanship and all those things are massively important, my friends. Um, but uh, I know if you're watching this right now, if you're checking this out, if you're part of the fight, uh, you want to be elite, okay? Uh, you want to be elite. You don't want to be mediocre. You want to be elite. Save the questions for the end, guys. Uh, so just copy and paste them later when I ask them for questions. Guys, the elite always find a way to win. I've talked about this before when it comes to prospecting. One of your roles as a salesperson is to prospect for new business. That means you are a hunter. You are, you, it is your duty, it is your responsibility to, have, to fill your pipeline with qualified leads so that you can sell unafraid, okay? And um, if you are just waiting for things to happen, you're gonna really struggle. One of the biggest areas that I see contractors struggle, you guys, is they don't put in the work, okay? They don't put in the work to develop their sales skills, all right? Skills, uh, sales is a skill just like playing guitar or doing anything else, okay? It can be learned. You're not born. Now, you might come out of the womb with a certain bent towards a certain characteristic that might serve you. You might come out of the womb being 6'9", and okay, right out of the gate of the gene pool there, you're probably in a better position to play basketball than somebody who's 5'2", okay? Okay, but it but doesn't mean just because you're tall that you're automatically going to the NBA. You need to work on those skills, develop those skills, and become one of the elite in the world if you want to play in, in the league someday. Are you all with me so far on that? Yes, no, up yours, anything while I take a bite on my protein bar? So I got chew. Is this making sense? Yes, thank you, Kelly. Somebody, somebody is. Tim, what's up, Timmy? So, I would, I would say that um, you guys don't share share this real quick. Wherever you're watching it, just share it, like it, do something so it pushes it up. Because the more contractors that understand this, the better off all of us are. Okay, so please share this. Um, if I look at my, just take, take a 10 hour work day. Okay, now I understand you have to work in the field and stuff, some of you, and there's other demands. Um, there's other demands on you as a business person and your family and things like that. But if you are not carving out um, a good chunk of time each day to work on the skill of sales, I'm telling you, you are missing the boat. I'm speaking in a couple days in Albuquerque, New Mexico at an event for painting contractors. And um, one of my first slides, and we're going to talk, I'm talking about sales and Shin Fu. One of my first slides set is, it literally says, you're probably going to think I'm full of crap. <laughs> okay, it, it, it literally says that because 
until you're in this, until you're immersed in this, until you're putting in the reps, until you're learning a new and a different, not a new, a different way of communicating with your prospects, I'm telling you, you're going to think it's full of crap. Until you start seeing some of the results, you're going to think it's it's full of crap. Okay. And um, it, it's kind of like if you go, uh, I'll just use me, you know, when I went into the Marine Corps, they can tell you all day what boot camp is like. But until you jump into boot camp and you're living it consistently, you have zero idea what's coming your way. Okay. So I want to encourage you guys, okay, to put in the work. Okay. Remember, I said my number one sales tip is it's not about the clothes, it's about connecting with another human being. That's the number one sales tip. You we do not do this naturally. There are a bunch of things happening in our brain and our physiology that want to protect us. So we don't say certain things or ask certain questions. We feel like we're backed into a corner and we don't know what to do when we get a certain, you know, objection from a prospect. Okay. And the reason that you're backed into the corner, your blood pressure goes up. You go, literally you go into fight or flight mode. I just read a psychology book on this shit. Okay. You go to fight or flight and your blood pressure increases and all the, the nervousness and you just feel weird. You can feel your face turning red like I used to. And it's because you're not prepared. All right. So I want to encourage you. And guys, I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, if you want to be an elite salesperson, um, there are no days off. Now, some of you are like, well, I want to take a Sunday off and spend it with my family. That's fine. But I'll tell you what, I do the same thing. But if I get a DM or a message comes over my phone or a past you know, client texts me, I reply within minutes. I re th this is not a good thing, the, what I'm about to say. I, I got up at like 2.30 in the morning last week one day to take a leak. All right. And I just happened to glance at my phone and there was a notification on there and I replied to it. It was a question about battleground and I replied to it at 2.30 in the morning. Why? I'm running with the wrong shirt. I should have wore my other shirt, my time kills deals shirt. Guys, that's why I say there are no days off. All right. When you are in sales, you need to be responding and connecting and communicating and building relationship when they're ready to do it. This is, I'm not, please understand me. I'm not saying you're working 24 seven. Okay. There's automations you can put in place and some things like that. All right. But my point here is have that mentality that it is your number one job to sell. It is your number one job to fill your pipeline. It's your number one job. Once you have a sales opportunity for you to then communicate with them in a way that is different than anyone else will communicate with them. So give me a second here. I'm, I got to pull up another note I have on here because I, my notes aren't all on my phone. <clears throat> I want to make sure I don't uh, forget a couple of these points. So what I want to do for a minute here is I want to talk about, you guys can see the screen. It's five-step Shin Fu pre-qualification process. There's five steps. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Hopefully you guys see those. <clears throat> so, and this is this, we go into depth in this. It's over two hours of video training uh, inside the Shinfu sales training uh, videos that released today. But what I want to talk about here quickly with you, you guys see me? We still good? We all good? Yeah. Okay, good. All right. Thanks. Because I'm toggling back and forth, so I don't see me, and I'm looking at other notes here. <clears throat> Guys, step one of the Shin Fu is called the motive. The purpose of the motive is to dig into the why behind the project, using questions and obviously listening to answers and peeling things back. Um, <clears throat> almost 0% of, of salespeople across all industries do not do this. They don't do it, okay? Um, they go into presentation mode. They want to tell you all the features and all the benefits of their product or their service and why they should hire you and this and that, okay? So I want to do a little exercise here real quick. Let's have fun with this. Get your thumbs ready. <clears throat> Type into the chat box, 
one reason, just one, because there'll be a bunch of people, okay? One reason somebody should hire your company, why they should hire you. Type it in the box. Come on, type it in there. There is a little delay here on my end for some reason. We listen. We give a shit. We're the best. I treat them like family. It says Matt. Our communication with the client. Ready to solve a problem today, says David. Honesty, says Juan. <clears throat> Tim says, because he's sexy. Giovanni says, uh, something about experiences. Experience is our priority. I bring value to your home. Seamless buying process. Okay. I'm going to give you guys some reasons <clears throat> that contractors tell me all the time. We have 25 years experience. We're fully insured. We do the highest quality work. We're, we won the best of our town award. We're a member of some organization, BBB, or the Chamber of Commerce, or some trade association. We have the most five-star reviews, no deposit required, top-line products, lowest prices, best warranty, we're on time, satisfaction guarantee. You get one point of contact when you work with our company. Open communication, no subcontractors, English-speaking crews, fully licensed, the best tools and techniques. Okay, We're a local business, guaranteed scheduling. Okay, guys, we could go on for days listing all the things like Paul just did here. We provide a detailed work scope outlining our job timeline and keep the customer informed at all times. All right, guys, here's what I'm about to share with you real quick. <clears throat> as important as those things are to you, they don't mean shit. Okay. They don't matter. All the reasons that you guys put in the chat box and the ones that I read off, bear with me. They may or may not, may or may not um, be valuable to your prospect. The only reason or reasons that somebody is going to buy from you is their reasons. All your reasons, all my reasons of why people should join the fight and jump into battleground and get this sales training thing we just released today and hire me to speak and do a workshop and all that. We, every one of us as, as business owners could talk for an hour straight about all the reasons why someone should hire us. Here's the problem. None of those reasons matter if it's not the prospect's reason, if it's not what we call their motive okay so when you go out you might be having some success with this i i get the sense that there's a few of you here you know we do this 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 and this and streamline process okay great okay great but i guarantee you there's room to grow i guarantee you uh that excuse me i guarantee you that you and your sales team can get better because nobody's ever arrived I don't care if you're the elite in anything in the world, you're elite because you always know there's another level. There's always a part of your game that can be better. All right. We got a guy who is part of our programs. He's a painting contractor, multi-million dollar painting contractor. He has over 1,200 leads coming in a year. 1,200. Okay. Let me read what he said. <clears throat> The Shinfu allows me to accurately and efficiently go through my 1,200 plus leads a year by myself. I no longer need a second salesperson to split the lead share with. I went from 65 to 75 hours a week to barely working 40 hours a week. I currently sell 85% of my jobs using pictures, video, FaceTime, and Zillow from my office chair. If I do go on site for an estimate, I'm getting paid between 30 $350 and $3,500, depending on the project. Okay. And so he goes on and on and on. I'm not going to, you know, keep reading that. Okay. 
So guys, girls, people, as important as all the reasons you think somebody should buy, this is what the motive is all about. It's uncovering their motivation for doing the project. And it's usually 99% of the time, a deeper emotional issue like embarrassment, fear, fill in the blank. Okay. Um, I don't have time to go into all the reasons. Okay. <clears throat> Second part of the Shinfu process is the money. We teach you how to talk to a, a prospect about what it's going to cost before you go out to their home. Okay. Before you jump in your truck, before you measure anything, you take your notes, you type it into your computer or your software, or whatever it is. All right. And then you play the follow up game and then they ghost you and then they want it revised. And then they want, you know, I just talked to somebody today, who, you know, spent a month. Okay. Spent a month with a prospect revisions back and forth for a $250,000 project. And then they wanted it down to 150 to 170. He brought it to, or one, 170 to 200. He got it down to 190 at his margins. He's a client of mine. Okay. And a good friend. <clears throat> Long story short, at the very end, the guy's like, well, I'll sign the contract if you knock another 7% off. Okay. And this person, this contractor said, no, I'm sorry. We don't play ball that way. And he walked from it because it's not the type of client that he wanted to take on who didn't respect what they were bringing to the table. So guys, many of you are spending all this time. Now he got paid about five grand or more for this consultation. So even though he didn't get the job, he still made like five grand or plus or whatever it was because of the consultation fee. All right. <clears throat> but guys, if you're going out and spending time on somebody's property in their home, on their, in their office, whatever it is, their yard, and they don't know, with a range within a couple thousand or a couple hundred bucks, depending on the size of the job, how much it's going to cost. You are not selling uh, with, with to your potential. Okay. You are dropping the ball. You're missing a ton of opportunity. Number one for cutting your estimating and sales time in half. And number two for selling at the rates that uh, are going to change your life. Okay. You guys with me on that? So step two is all about the money. We teach you how, after you get the motive, we teach you how to transition into money. Step three, we call it the truth. Boom. It's the truth. This is what's going to happen if, because some by we, we also get the client, we get the prospect to invite you out to the home. Okay. You never invite yourself to somebody's property. Yeah, we got this graduation party. Come on. Oh, sounds like that's really important to you. Yeah, it is. Okay. Well, this project's going to be about 10 to 12 grand. I could swing by later this week and firm it up. Okay, great. See, you invited yourself out. What you want to do is put it in their court to invite you out. And uh, there's a tonality and, and phraseology. I don't know if that's a word or not. <clears throat> of Different types of word tracks that because now when you're invited, you're a guest. You're not an intruder. They invited you. There's a psychology here. Well, during step three, the truth, after they invite you out, this is to set the expectation that if I get out there and I see something that's going to be a game changing situation based on what we talked about on the on the phone before I came out, we set our budget range. I'm just going to call a timeout. We're going to have a conversation. This protects you and the, and the prospect. OK, step four is influencers. OK, we've all heard it. I got to talk to my wife, my husband. I got to run this by my financial planner, my CPA. I need to call my dad because he was a con he's a, he was a contractor. He's a general contractor or whatever the hell he was. And then you find out that his dad shut his business down 15 years ago because he didn't know how to run his business. But he still wants his advice and all those different reasons. Right. <clears throat> um, this is called the influencers. Who are who who are the people? the relationships in their life that are influencing their decision to purchase or not with this project and with your company. All right. <clears throat> and then finally, if you choose to, step five is what we call the BS meter. This is using a consultation fee to take their temperature and see if they're really serious about doing the job. Now, some people do them all the time. Some don't do them. Um, I'm in the middle on them. It just depends. Depends what my workload is. Depends how that pre-qualification call goes. Uh, we have people that implement them all the time that crush it. We have people that never implement it and they crush it too. Okay. 
Uh, that is a decision that you guys will have to make. But guys, this, <clears throat> this is a different process because most contractors go out and they barf all over people and talk about all the reasons why, like we said earlier. But you must connect with their reasons. You guys still with me because the chat box got really quiet. So I want to talk a couple do's and don'ts just on the motive here for you guys. <clears throat> some some no-nos, okay? Some no-nos on the motive. Um, Facebook user, how can I get Shin Fu role-playing or training? Uh, I don't know who you are, but there's a ticker at the bottom of the screen. Just click that link and you get access to the video training right there. Or if you want to go faster and deeper, you could jump into Battleground and you can email help the contractor fight.com, whoever you are. Okay. So, um, so guys, when we're in the motive, I have three main don'ts. Number one, do not go technical. Do not talk about the roller nap you're going to use or the spray tip. Don't talk about terminology of framing that people have no fucking idea. All right. Do not go technical. Technicals later, if at all, depending on what they need and who they are. OK, a high C on a disc profile is going to want to go technical at some point. But we're going to push that off because we want to go emotional first. All right. There's a book um, that I just read this past summer. What's it called? Uh, it's over there on my bookshelf and I can't see it. Um, it basically talks about every human being. Uh, picture an elephant. OK. <clears throat> elephant is big. You got the rider on top of the elephant. The rider is small compared to the elephant. Hopefully you're tracking with me so far. The elephant can pretty much do whatever it wants to do because it's bigger and stronger. Would, would we agree? Yes, we would agree. Okay. Your prospects, emotions, our emotions as human beings are the elephant. Our brain, our logic is the rider. Okay. So. You must, yeah, the book is called Switch. Whoever said that, thank you. <clears throat> so you have to control the elephant first. So even though you have somebody that might want to understand more of the technical details, that can be put off to later, not derail you until you get control of the elephant, okay? So when you get somebody, a lot of you guys are going out and you're trying to sell to the rider on top of the elephant. You're trying to sell the logic, okay? You must connect with the emotion, OK, then that's the number one goal of, of motive, OK, is to uncover their reasons and have that connection with them of why they want to do the project. OK, we all good. So number one, do not go technical. Number two, do not make assumptions. OK, don't make an assumption about anything from the timing to what they want to spend to what's important to them, you must remain curious. If you are not curious, you're dead, okay? You, you, if you are not curious, you will not connect with the elephant and therefore you will look and sound like every other salesperson that like you guys just typed in the chat box, all the reasons why we're amazing and we do this and our sis and that, and and blah, 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 okay? All that bullshit, all right? You all sound the same. We all sound the same if we don't do things differently. So do not make assumptions. And number three, don't do, okay, is don't tell us why you're amazing. Okay. Do not tell us why you're amazing. That's like barfing all over them going, we're really amazing and all that. Yeah, it's, that's the book, William. Um, all right. So those are the, the big three, Tom's big three no-nos. I'm sure some of our other coaches have their own no-nos in the motive, okay? But guys, don't go technical, don't make assumptions, and don't tell us why you're amazing because this is not about you. This is about them, okay? Just like I'm doing this right now, I'm not sitting here. I am giving you value. I am educating you. I make these lives and these videos and the content that we've done for years, I make it about you because you care about you, okay? And as much as I love the fight and the people here and all you guys, and I want you to have a great life and this and that, you care about you more than I care about you, all right? So I need to make sure that I'm speaking your language, that I'm going to you where you're at, 
All right. Hopefully that makes sense. So <clears throat> do's, things you want to do in the motive. You want to show up. And when I say show up, now we teach this. This could be done on the phone or in person, but we recommend having this first Shinfu sales conversation on the phone before you go out. Lead comes in, you call them back, boom, we're having the conversation. All right. In 10 to 15 minutes, in most cases, you will know if they're going to be your client or not. Okay. How cool is that? So number one, you must show up with gratitude and the right spirit. Okay. The right spirit, a curious spirit, a grateful spirit. Okay. Somebody who's um, not all in their face and barfing on them and telling them, blah, blah, blah. Number two, do, must do, motive do. Picture them with a sign around their neck. I stole this from Derek Johnson, one of our coaches. <clears throat> Big sign around, hanging around their neck that says, make me feel important. Make me feel important. Most salespeople do not make their prospects feel important. Most salespeople are worried about getting the job worried about filling the calendar. Me, 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 me. Okay. So show up with the right spirit. Number two, make me feel important. Number three, we call it peel. Don't pounce. Like you're peeling an onion, peeling a banana to get to the center. Okay. When you start, those of you that are jumping in and getting the link at the bottom here to the video training that we just released today, you're going to jump into this and your, your old habits are going to come up if you're not doing enough role plays with people that know how to spot this shit, okay? So you'll go, hey, you know, when you hire a contractor, what's the most important thing? Blah, 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 some open-ended question. Oh, it's really important that they don't leave a mess. Right there. Whatever they give you, don't pounce on it like a lion attacking its prey. Here's what pouncing sounds like. Oh, well, we never leave a mess. We use plastic and tape and we swift for the floors and we have a checklist that we follow that our crew leaders use and they go through at the end of the job with you and they make sure that all the boxes are checked and you're happy with the cleanup. So there's never a mess. I'm, I'm pouncing. I'm throwing up all over them. Peeling, okay, you want to peel, not pounce. Yeah, you know, it's important that they don't leave a mess. <clears throat> That's an interesting statement. Tell me more about that. Well, you know, my, my cousin, they hired a remodeler and they came in and ripped the kitchen apart. And it was supposed to be a four week job. And it ended up being like a nine week job. And they lived in this like war zone for several weeks. And they kept telling them, Hey, can you clean some things up? My little kids are walking around here. And my kid scraped his leg on a piece of plywood that was sticking out and you know, whatever it is. And they're talking and they're talking and they're talking guys. That's the elephant. That's the emotion. And now they just gave me that. What did they just say? They just gave me more ammo. They just said, it's supposed to take four weeks and it took nine or whatever I said. Another opportunity to pounce. Oh, well, we always finish on time and we hit our deadline. We don't start a project until all the materials are in. So that way we know we have complete, you're pouncing. Shut the fuck up. Okay. Man. Took nine weeks. What did that do for the flow around the house? I'm poking the pain. I'm poking the emotion. I'm getting them to open up. Are you guys with me on this? Okay. So guys, girls, salespeople, sales is a skill. I'm going to open it up for questions now. <clears throat> sales is a skill that can be learned. All right. Just like any other skill, it's going to take commitment. All right. It's not just the knowledge. There's commitment. There are four skills, four, four stages to learning a new skill. Number one is called unconscious incompetence. Let me say it again. Tongue twister. Unconscious incompetence. Unconscious means I'm not aware of it. Incompetent means I'm not good at it. So I'm not even aware that I suck at this. Okay, that's first level. Well, right now, if you're on this, you are now conscious. You have some sort of consciousness around this that, hey, this is a skill that can be learned. So as you start working on this, as you start role-playing, going through these training videos and stuff that we have for you, 
um, you guys, you will then move to conscious incompetence. Like I'm aware of this, I'm still not really good, but I'm working on it, okay? It's picture playing a guitar or any other skill. Then with more reps, learning, putting things into practice, getting uncomfortable, putting in the work, you move to the third stage of learning a new skill, which is called conscious competence. Meaning, I'm getting better at this, I'm actually getting pretty good at it, but I have to try. Like I really gotta focus, I really have to try and, and give it my best, okay? Um, and then as you put more work in, okay, you get knocked around a little bit in the role plays, uh, you, you start, you know, uh, taking notes on your sales calls and understanding where things fall apart. You're, you're, you're now moving to that fourth stage of learning a new skill, which is called unconscious competence. This is where it's second nature. Things come out of your mouth because you've repped them so many times. You've practiced them so many times that you just can't help do it. You do it in every conversation you have with everybody, wife, kids, guy at the store, a prospect, your crew, whatever. And you are now moving to a level called mastery, okay? So commit to being an elite salesperson. You guys, most salespeople are medi mediocre at best. And, you know, just like the saying, a blind squirrel finds a nut every now and then. Shitty salespeople sell jobs now and then because other contractors don't answer their phone. They don't get back to them, whatever it is. They blow them off. So they got to settle. And this person who's a maybe mediocre salesperson thinks he's the shit, okay? When he's really not the shit, he was just the last choice, all right? So um, put the work in. Commit to getting better. Elite salespeople practice. Okay. You've all heard that, maybe not, but many of you heard the stories of like guys like um, Kobe Bryant would go to the gym an hour and a half, two hours before a game, and he'd shoot, you know, free throws and three pointers, and he'd work on a dribble and footwork and things like that on game day a couple hours before the game. And that was on a game day, okay? Um, you got Larry Bird who used to shoot, you know, a thousand free throws a day, okay? We can go on and on and on, you know, virtuoso musicians, whatever. Guys, if you're listening to this right now, um, I highly doubt that you wanna be mediocre. So you must commit to learning the new skill, okay? Um, of doing that, of getting better each and every day. And I promise you, it's going to be awkward in the beginning. You're going to fumble through it, but it's just like game tape, guys. Or for our military guys, it's the after action report. Hey, what went well on the patrol? What did we screw up? What would we do differently next time? And things like that. Or you're watching the game film of a football team that you coach or whatever, like I coached for 17 years. And the day after the game, we'd all get together, and watch the game film. Hey, this play got blown up because our left guard took the wrong first step and he didn't get his face across the defender slanting that way and the guy blew up the play in the backfield it was one misstep by one guy okay so great now we can fix it okay can't get better if you don't know what to fix all right so i'm going to take questions for a few minutes uh i want to encourage you go to the contractorfight.com forward slash sell uh if you want to take advantage of our uh, new sales training videos that just dropped today monday february 20th and we have a special deal going until, Mon uh, I don't know what day the 28th is, but February 28th. All right. Roz just dropped the link in there. Thank you. All right. So let me go back to some of these uh, questions here. William, if you go off the rails and find yourself pouncing, what do you tell yourself to get back on track as fast as possible? Well, in the moment, just breathe. You got to breathe. Once you recognize that you're going down the wrong path, William, just take a breath. Slow it down. This is where you got to be comfortable with silence, okay? Um, and it's just like anything else. If you're driving down the road and your car starts veering off and your tires hit the gravel on the shoulder of the road, you don't stop the car and freak out and go, oh my God, you just gently guide the car back onto the road. You just self-correct. So there's really nothing I tell myself other than just being aware. 
And the more you do this, the more you practice, you check these videos out, you role play this and that, you guys, your, your self-awareness will go through the roof. This is why role plays are so important too. We do probably, I don't know, several thousand role plays a month within Battleground. Some are formal and most are members with other members that know what the hell they're doing. And um, again, the more reps you do, the more your self-awareness grows. Thanks for the question. Facebook user. Talking with elderly folks that don't want to measure and send pictures. How do we go about this? We don't have them measure anything. And um, not everyone has people send pictures, but it's a conversation. If you have the address, you could pull it up on Zillow. You could pull it up online and see the damn house. So again, and you make it about them. There are different strategies that we teach of how to have that conversation. Like, you know, hey, listen, I just want to make sure that, you know, I'm the right guy for your project. You know, are you okay if, if we just have a short conversation and I pick your brain a little, just make sure I, I'm on the same page as you guys, make sure it makes sense for me to come out and start our process with you. Okay. Um, and that, that's a question we used to get all the time, eight or nine years ago when we started training this, whoever's asking the question. And um, what's funny though, is I don't know too many old people, elderly people that don't have a phone uh, that aren't on Facebook or don't have a neighbor. Literally we've had people go, all right, I'll call you back in 15 minutes. I'm going to go ask my neighbor next door to take some pictures and text them to you. We've literally had that. That doesn't happen if you don't have the right spirit of conversation. Now, this is very different than most contractors are doing. So, you know, there are some people out there that are going to have a hard time getting their head around this, but don't let that scare you. Like that's that's not a not a deal breaker at all. Chris, how do you really get somebody talking about the motive for something such as siding when basically the two reasons for a siding project are it's ugly or damaged? Uh, there's emotional reasons that you're not touching into. Okay, what is the, okay, it's ugly. Hey, you said ugly, why is that a problem? And you don't wanna say why that's accusatory. So you said ugly, you know, hey, you said Joey or Chris, you said you wanna do the siding cause it's just ugly. You know, what? what's the, What's the harm in just keeping it the way it is? Okay. And when you're peeling things back, okay, learning the questions that we give you that you can make your own, you're probably going to get to the point where they're going to talk about uh, embarrassment. Uh, I've had people tell me that uh, I'm tired of being in the house. I can't invite people over to in my family because my, my yard's fucking ugly or whatever it is. Okay. Guys, I, I did a pretty solid landscape project at my house here in the last couple of years. We bought the home and the yard was really ugly. And I would hide on my front porch with the bricks behind me with a, and do videos. I wouldn't be in my backyard because here I'm broadcasting to the world. And I knew I was getting the yard done. My main motivation was embarrassment. Here I am broadcasting to the world and I can't even be in my backyard because it's so damn ugly. Okay. So um, there's always a deeper reason, Chris. All right. Um, Dream away exteriors, tips on following up on clients after you give them the estimate. We don't give estimates. We the, the estimate is over the phone. It's a conversation. So there's nothing to follow up on. Sometimes you put it in their court to talk to their spouse and get back to you. And I'll, I'll go, cool. When would you like me to call you back and see if your husband's okay with it? Right? That's like anything. But guys, all of you guys that are, that are typing up bids and sending them out there to the, the universe, and then you've got a big follow-up list, that goes away. That goes away. Not, not 100%, but at least by 80%, okay? Because you're not going to type anything up, dream away, okay? Guys, do not type a fucking thing up unless you're getting paid, all right? Either for the consultation or the design or getting a deposit check. Um, Paul, what if you make all the right Shinfu connections, but still just come down to a customer shopping price? 100%, that happens. But you're, wouldn't you rather know that on the phone? Guys, this is not a, like when you do Shinfu, this is not a guarantee that you close every job. This is a guarantee that you will weed out the tire kickers quickly so you can give your attention to the right buyers. Okay, so many times. Okay, well, I'll tell you right now, my, uh, my he, I, I bought him out and he retired, my partner, Steve. Um. Steve would get five to 600 leads a year. And he, he only had a 18 to 25% close rate year after year. Okay. But he brought in multi-millions of dollars. Okay. Um, 
He sold every job at his price, but his close rate was low. Some of you guys, like a, a low close rate is not a bad thing if it's the right clients at the right price. Okay. So, uh, and so if he had 500 leads came in, that means like at least 400 of them he found out on the phone in 10 to 20 minutes. Okay. Versus an hour there, an hour fucking around with the people and talking and ha 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 and all that other shit. And then typing shit up and sending it and following up and blah, blah, blah. We used to do polls in our, in our sales training group. <clears throat> um, and I know everyone's different. So don't start typing shit in the box, you guys, but the average contractor is somewhere between three and four hours for, for an estimate of their life. Drive time there and back, time on site, time typing shit up, following up over and over and over. Then they want revisions, this and that. You add it all up, it's about that versus a 10 to 15 minute conversation, 20 minute conversation to find out that they, they just want a low price. You weeded them out. You're good. Okay. <clears throat> um, what does it really mean when a customer says we're waiting on some other estimates? And then we'll make a decision. Uh, it could mean many things. I'm, I'm not going to make an assumption. It could mean they you haven't connected with them. Okay. Uh, it means they don't see value. You didn't connect with the, the elephant, the emotion um, to differentiate. It could mean that they have this old school, you know, law that you always get three estimates. Um, maybe you didn't share something or ask something that's important to them. OK, it could be a number of things, but I, I can't make an assumption on that. That's what you will figure out when you dig into the motive. And there are times, Paul, when people are like, you do everything right. And they're like, well, we're, we're going to get a couple other other bids. OK. And remember, I haven't spent any time other than a 15, 20 minute phone call here. And I put it in their court. All right. Um, when the customer keeps repeating, you need to come out and see it. What's a good way of handling that, says Facebook user? Absolutely. I cannot wait to come out and see your project and put eyes on it and do all my fancy measuring and all those things and really make this come to life for you guys. But hey, are you cool here for a minute if I just ask you a few questions to see if it just makes sense for me to even come out? I'm not even sure I can help you yet. Very disarming. They always take, not the bait. I don't mean it like it, it's slimy. It just means... They're, they'll they'll play along. See, guys, this process gives you control. Okay, it gives you control, and it gives you control, but it makes them feel like they're in control. <laughs> okay, when you do it properly with the right spirit, tonality, and the right uh, word tracks. Okay, so. Uh, you always agree. Absolutely. I cannot wait to come out and check out your project. Hey, real quick, before we put that on the calendar, are you cool if I ask you a few more questions? And then what's going to happen is you're going to keep peeling and digging and peeling, and you're going to get to a point where they're going to opt themselves out of working with you, or they're going to opt themselves in and say, man, that sounds great. When can you come out? And then you go from there. Um, Yes, Wade, what's up? This is live in New Zealand. Um, Edward, so don't even create a job on job tread if they aren't ready to get on the schedule. No, don't create a job on any program that you use or don't do not type anything up. Guys, if, if you can't give me a range of what something's going to cost in your trade, you have no business, you know, selling anything right now. Okay. If you got to go work it up and you can't talk in general numbers, like, Hey, listen, Tommy, I know we're talking about this, you know, painting your exterior here. And this is after motive and we transfer to, to the money. Are you cool? If, if we talk about the money now, okay. What something like this might cost. Yeah. Well, I've had people in your situation that, are putting the house on the market and they want to clean it up in the next year or so and, and, and sell it, that they want to go all out and they want the best of the best. And they want the siding and the trim and the windows and the doors and the deck and the fence and all these things, and the play set, they want it all looking beautiful, like Taj Mahal, off the charts, shock appeal, you know, something like that's, I don't know, 40 to 35,000 bucks. Pause. 
sometimes I go, okay, let's do it. Or I have some people that say, no, I'm good without the deck and the fence. You know, I just want to keep the same color and I want to, you know, do a little caulking and just clean it up and put a couple coats on the siding. The trim is fine. It doesn't look too worn, you know, blah, blah, blah. Sometimes, you know, that project might be somewhere around, I don't know, 20 down to maybe $18,000 for a project like this. Which of those conversations would you like to have? And then you shut your mouth. Okay. So then Edward, when they go, no, I'm good with the, whatever you're talking. Okay. Then we're going to start having a conversation of whether you're going out to consult and get a fee for that, or you're going to come out and pick up a deposit check. If you're going to come out and pick up a deposit check, of course, you're going to have to go in to whatever program that you use and put shit in and do your thing. Okay. But guys do not go out there and put all that legwork in for somebody that you're not sure is going to be your client. Okay. <clears throat> the AP channel, how much money should a company have before expanding? Uh, this is not a question for today. AP, sorry. This is sales. Brandon, so you give them a price range based off the condo you have the client and they're good. Then you charge them to give them an actual price. No, I gave them the actual price. Guys, the, the actual price is only going to be a couple hundred bucks. If it's a hundred thousand dollar job, it's only gonna be a thousand or two off in one direction or not or, or another. Okay. If it's, if I'm painting like four rooms in a house, it's going to be a couple hundred bucks one way or the other. There's, there's, what you guys are doing, I'm not picking on you, Brandon, at all, or anybody else who's asking questions. These are great questions. So feel safe. Ask your questions. You cannot have a script for every situation and every question that you're going to get. What you can, what we will give you in, in Shin Fu is a framework, okay? A framework to spot things, to dig deeper on things, to have open open conversations, honest conversations with people. Hey, if I get out there, you know, I know we're talking eight to 10 grand to paint this these rooms. Um, on a rare occasion, I get out there and I see a game changing situation. I get out there and, you know, there's some drywall. Like one time I touched the drywall in a house and the wall like crumbled and bees came out of it. True story. Okay. And, um, you know, if something like that happens, I'm going to have to call a timeout. It's probably going to cost some more money. Are you cool with that? Yeah, I'm cool with that. But you're always going to write up the base scope work. Now, and don't get caught up on consultation fee, guys. The goal is not to get paid for estimates. The estimates are free. The estimate is the fucking phone call you're having with people. Okay. I'll give you guys one right now. You can steal this. Oh, you, somebody calls. Yeah, I want an estimate on, on uh, you know, paint my house. Awesome. I really appreciate you calling, blah, 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 blah. Hey, so just out of curiosity here, Joe, are uh, what, what phase of the process are you in right now? Or like you just gathering some information on what this might cost, you know, just some ballpark numbers, or are you looking to get this on the, ske on the schedule and rock and roll with this thing right now? That's going to give you one of two paths that you can go down, Brandon. Okay. So the goal is not to you're not charging them twice. And if they if they do a consult fee and then later they call you back and want to get on the schedule, you just apply that towards the deposit, okay? Um, like I said earlier, I don't know if you're on your most, it's probably 50-50 in our group of people that charge for consultations and those that don't. The bottom line is you don't go to the yard or the home or the property without getting money, okay? And that money is either a deposit check to get on the schedule or it's a consultation fee or a design fee for your time and your expertise. All right. Um, Christian, what about people already fired multiple contractors? You're fixing their mistake, but client doesn't trust you. Shady client also not agreeing with complete deposit and adding on blah, blah, blah. Then I don't work with them. You, you do my rules or you don't work with my company, Christian. Uh, there's a reason they fired multiple contractors. And I found through the years that when I hear that from a client, I immediately go to this client is batshit fucking crazy. Okay. So number one, I probably don't want to work with them. Number two, um, I'm inheriting someone else's shit. So there are no discounts. There's no feel bad discount fee for you because you're a little old lady who got taken. This is, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it right. Here's our deposit terms. Love you. We're here for you. You don't want it next. We're moving on. Okay. Um, my God, you guys, come on. Um, 
Not that one, not that. All right, Edward, if they aren't buying, if they are not buying, are they a lead? Edward. Anyone who reaches out to your company to inquire about your services is called a lead, whether they hire you or not. That is a lead. When you shin fu the lead, they become a qualified prospect or they become unqualified. So it's a qualified lead or an unqualified lead. If it's a qualified lead, you go to the next step in your sales process. Okay. If they choose not to buy, they were still a lead. If they choose not to buy, they're still in your database and you continue to market to them until the end of fucking time because maybe they hired the wrong guy this time, but because you've stayed in front of them, okay, they're going to hire you the next time. All right. Um, ballpark, not home plate, plate, question mark. Yeah, I mean, guys, there there are some trades where I can tell you that we're, we're you could tell me exactly what it's going to cost. Like our guys that do water features, they know, hey, if I'm going to put in an 11 by 16 pond with a waterfall and lights, three lights, it's this much money, no matter where I fucking dig the hole and build the pond. Okay. The one condition would be we get into it. And now there's all these roots and shit like that. We teach you how to have a conversation that in case something comes up like that, you can call a timeout and get paid for the additional work. Okay. Um, so, um, you know, and there are others that, you know, they're going to take some time, but most, you just want to know, does it make sense for us to go on a second date, guys? The first date is like having a phone call. You met somebody on Tinder or some shit. Now you're going to have a phone call. That's Shin Fu. Hey, does it make sense for us to connect in person? <laughs> okay. <laughs> and so, uh, guys, don't overthink this stuff. This is not complicated. Got a lot of you guys right now, this is understandable. So I'm not picking on you, but a lot of you guys are overthinking this shit. See, there's certain things and questions that you're asking you guys that you will not understand until you get into it, how to handle it, because it is a framework. It is not a script. It is a framework. All right. Um, what's a good phraseology for follow-up calls? It all depends on the context and how you set it up. Okay. Hey, Joe, you, you it's Tom with, you know, such and such. You told me... Um, uh, you told me the other day to give you a call. You were going to talk to your wife and, and, uh, you know, what'd she say? Because I, I don't, I don't put a lot into follow-up calls because when you pre-qualify properly, you do not have to make a lot of follow-up calls. And when you do, um, they're just easy. Okay. Um, and there's other things that you can send. If somebody's ghosting you, we teach you what to email them or text them to get them to respond every time and shit like that. Um, I don't mean to brush this off, Paul, but I'm just saying like it's it is truly a non-issue because there's always a next step that you've created in the prequal. OK, hey, before before I come out there, we re rearrange our calendars and all this other stuff. OK, um, what do you think your wife's going to say or your husband or your CPA or whatever the fuck? Because I don't say it that way. It's part of the conversation that we teach you to do. Oh, I need to check with my wife. Awesome. I think you should check with your wife. What do you think she's going to say? Well, she's probably going to tell me to do it. I mean, this was her idea. Yeah. How do you think she's going to feel about the 10 grand? Uh, she doesn't handle the money, blah, blah, blah. I wear the pants in this family. Sometimes that my spidey sense is tingling. I'll tell you what, why don't you have a conversation with your wife? Last thing I want to do is for you to rearrange your calendar to meet me. I come out there, you know, and we get all excited about doing this project you know, just to figure that you guys aren't on the same page. I'd hate for that to happen. You know, blah, blah, blah. There are a lot of ways to do this, you guys. Karen, a couple more questions, guys. <clears throat> How do clients feel about video consultation? They love it. You know, I, I don't know if you were on here earlier. I just read a one of our guys who does our training. He does over 1,200 leads a year himself, multi-million dollar company. He's a painter. And 85% of those are done via FaceTime, Zoom, video, pictures, all those different things. Uh, no, if somebody wants to do a video consult, meaning, guys, a video consult is 
We're on video now together. Show me the room that you want done. There it is. It's no different than then send me a picture. Hey, listen, pan over to the right over there. What's around that corner? Hey, can you go around back there? I'm having a cup that I would I'll do that all day. Sitting at home, drinking an iced tea, hanging out. People love it, guys. Guys, you got to remember the world that we live in. The average consumer does not live in your world. They live in the world of getting mortgages on phones. All right. Um, you know, everything being quick and easy and pre-approved. They live in the world of um, now. All right. They want to feel that boxes are being checked and they're moving forward on, a pro pro uh, on the process. All right. You can have literally an amazing video sales conversation with somebody before any of your competitors even fucking call them back. Okay. So another rule is sales here. I should have told you earlier, guys, and it keeps coming up in here in the comments. Be careful that pay attention right now. <laughs> chop, chop. You guys paying attention? This is important. One of the biggest mistakes salespeople make is you make your shit their shit. Well, I'd never buy a paint job over the phone. Okay. Well, we're, good thing we're not selling one to you then. Okay. Or I think they might not like video or the old people, they're not going to take a picture and send it to me. Like you, you start projecting your bullshit. Okay. Onto your prospects. This is making assumptions. Okay. So be very careful. All right. Let's play this game. Um, Brandon, would you ever tell a customer you're short on time and have to go if they're talking your ear off? Uh, it depends. I'll let them talk for an hour or, two, or more if they're going to fucking buy from me. Okay. So, um, yeah, I'm, uh, no, and your first tense of your was correct. The, your correction is the wrong version, Brandon, by the way. Anyway, um, no, like, because if they're talking, you're winning. Now, there are some people, but again, we teach you how to spot these people early on, okay? And we teach you tactful, respectful ways to get off the phone if you realize you're with a chatty Kathy who's never going to buy from you or the old retired guy that's just bored and he likes having fucking phone conversations with people, okay? Good thing you're not in his yard. All right, so let's do this. Type in the chat box. Your trade... Not hold on. <clears throat> don't don't give me stupid answers like a billion dollars or something. Okay, you guys, like seriously, don't play this game. Just be real here. Type in what you think a lot of money is. Like contractor comes to your house for any trade. I don't care what it is, <clears throat> and they tell you a dollar amount for you to go. Shit, that's a lot of money. What's that dollar amount? How would you handle clients who don't want to pay for your unforeseen repairs? Gave the okay to go ahead and fix whatever needed to be fixed. Agreed on TNM, but argue over the bill. Well, that's where your contracts come in place. We just did a call last week inside a battleground with our construction attorney, Carolyn Crow Means, uh, and she talked about shit like that. So you got to have rock solid contracts and, um, and then when you do that and they, they've agreed and they've signed and all that other shit, then you contact Carolyn <laughs> and she sends them a letter and they pay you. 50 grand's a lot to me. 20 grand, 40K, 30K, 100K. Okay, guys, things are all over the place is my point. Okay, so salespeople that are not trained typically sell in the manner in which they buy. Let me say that again. Untrained salespeople who still have money head trash and project their bullshit on their prospects, they sell in the manner to which they buy. So if I think 500 bucks is a lot of money to paint a room, I'm gonna have a hard time spitting out 500 bucks or more to paint a room to my prospects. And this is why practice is important. This is why confidence in your numbers is important. All the things that we teach in Battleground, okay? So um, 
Hopefully that make, makes sense, you guys, all right? Do not project your bullshit onto your buyers. A lot of people, a lot of you want to do high-end work and work for high-end people. If you smell like any sort of lack of confidence whatsoever, uh, either you're not going to get the job or if you do get the job, they're going to make it, they're going to nitpick you and hold your hand because they don't trust you because you don't have confidence, okay? Um, you need to you need to treat that person as an equal and expect to be treated as an equal. And you can't do that if you don't have confidence in what you're doing. All right. My friends. My friend. <laughs> I always laugh. Go to foreign countries and you go to those marketplaces and stuff and they're always trying to sell you shit. And they're like, my friend. Special for you. Anyway. Um, <laughs> no, it's not fake it, Karen. Karen Francis Hill. Thanks for being here. It's not fake it till you make it. No, it's put in the work. So you don't have to fake it because fake always comes through in the end. All right. I understand your, what you're saying there and why you said it. Like, But no, you cannot fake confidence, you guys, because at some point the real you is going to ooze out and it ain't going to be good. Ask me how I know, because it, it happened before. It's happened in my life before. All right. So um, what's up, Curtis? Curtis, you going to be at PCA this week? You going down to Albuquerque? Am I going to see you there? Give you a big hug. Um, all right. So. I want to invite you, go to thecontractorfight.com forward slash, forward slash sell, okay? Forward slash sell, get the Shinfu video sales training. For fucking three years, people are going, when are you going to do video sales training? When are you going to do video sales training? Go get it. It's here, all right? I, I promise you, if you consume it, take it seriously and implement the shit that's in there, you guys will be crushing it. Okay. You will, I, I, I guarantee it if you do the work. Okay. Um, and guys, this is the time to prepare. <clears throat> All right. Sales, human connection is going to be more important in the coming months and coming years than it's ever been. Okay. <clears throat> this is how you truly differentiate. It is the conversation that you have with your prospects up front before anything else happens. Super appreciate you guys. Thanks to the fight team for helping me here tonight. Uh, guys, get out there. Keep winning. Appreciate y'all. See you next time.